Hi, I'm Jess. Hi, I'm Kristen. And this is Rediscover, a conversation where we travel through everything that makes up the essence of who we are and how to live authentically and imaginatively. Here, we invite you to join us as we explore and discuss a little bit of, well, everything. From Disney to cultivating your most authentic life to deepening your relationships and talking about the real stuff. We hope you'll find this a space that speaks to you, encourages you, and brings a little bit of magic into your day. Hi there, I'm Jess. Hi everyone, I'm Kristen. And welcome back to this week's episode of Rediscover. This week, we are doing one of our very first Zoom recordings. (laughs) This is the first time Jess and I have ever recorded an episode of Rediscover remotely. But um, for those of you who did not hear, uh, I actually moved back to Orlando last week and... I'm currently sitting on the floor of my unfurnished apartment. In total rediscover style. In total rediscover style. I have to sit on the floor when we record in my empty apartment, waiting for all of my things to show up at some point. And as always, we're keeping it really low key and super glamorous. (laughs) And I got a little choked up. I'm not going to lie. I was setting up uh, my microphone and everything. And I was like, Jess is in here. (laughs) <laughs> I got sad, but we are going to be able to record together very soon. But for now, there's going to be a few remote recordings. Yes. And clearly you can tell from this episode, Rediscover will continue on because it's our passion project and Zoom is a thing that is very widespread nowadays. So makes it nice and easy for us. Yeah, honestly, I feel like without Zoom, I wouldn't know how we were going to do this. So. Thank you, Zoom, for thank you, Zoom, for making this possible. An ability to keep doing this because the second I found out I was going to be moving, I was like, Jess, I want to keep doing this. Like, this is by no means me saying, like, okay, that was fun, but bye bye. Like, no, this is so special to both of us, and we just love every single episode we get to do. So, we wanted to keep it going. So that's a little life update. Yes. So today we are continuing our March theme of spring cleaning, and we are going to dive into a discussion that talks about cleansing a more emotional area of life. We are titling this episode Cultivating Happiness because there's just so much to talk about within the concept of happiness. There really is. I feel like you could have an entire podcast titled Cultivating Happiness and just everything could be about that. Um, But yeah, we wanted to make sure that this month we talked about a lot of different spaces in life that you can really do some spring cleaning, do some reevaluating and testing and adjusting. And happiness is kind of a polarizing topic and the word cultivating is of significance here. So we definitely want to dive into some of the things that we've learned, some observations we've made as always, some action items for all of you, some takeaways and And things to contemplate as you zoom out and big picture look at your life and your different spaces and relationships and think about how you can actually effectively and practically be a happier person today, right now. (laughs) It all comes down to choice, which is going to be the root of the episode. Like Kristen was saying, happiness can be sort of a touchy subject because if you're coming from a perspective where you are comparing yourself to other people, whether that be in person or over the highlight reel, which is social media, it's very easy to look at other people and feel like, oh, they just got so lucky. Everything goes their way. They are just so happy because they have a marriage, a family, a job, a fill in the blank and I think that it is often forgotten that, number one, we are all inherently worthy of all of these things. A lot of it depends on your path in your own particular life. But number two, just because someone has certain things, the emotion, happiness, isn't necessarily generated from the things. That emotion is generated from within the person. 
Yeah. It's funny. I was talking earlier, um, actually to my boss about uh, attribution theory, but that idea that you either attribute, you know, emotions, reactions, this person made me do this, say this, whatever to either external or internal circumstances. So if you're sitting in traffic and the traffic is making, I'm using air quotes, you can't see me, but I'm doing it, making you angry. Is the traffic making you angry or are you allowing that negative emotion to take up space while you're sitting in traffic. That's why you, you know, you see like some of the happiest people actually don't have that much and they actually have lives that are often very full of struggle and, and uncertainty. And it's because they've taken the power out of the external hands and placed it back within themselves. And I think we always think, kind of as Jess was saying, the happiness is a thing that happens to you, but it, it, it doesn't. It's a thing that you happen to create. And like we're entitling this episode, Cultivate Within Yourself. And we're constantly chasing the next high. And I think that that's something that's inherent with human beings. Like, well, when I get this job, I'll be happy. Oh, well, now that I'm getting married, I'll be happy. You know, oh, we're going to buy this house. I'm going to be so happy. When I move here, I'll be happy. I had to be really careful when I was moving back to Orlando. I know that I love it here and it makes me happy, but I knew that I was also happy in Buffalo and I, I didn't think that I was um, for a while. And then I started to look around me and realize all of these things were actually opportunities to like engage in a more positive outlook pretty much, which is where it starts. Absolutely. I call that an if then syndrome. Like if Mm -hmm. this happens, then I'll be happy. But the thing is that when you look at things that way, you're taking yourself with you. You are the common thread from point A to point B. So if you're not happy where you are now, you're not necessarily going to be happy when you have that thing happen. Because at the end of the day, when that initial high wears off, you're going to come back to your homeostasis essentially and You're the one who is cultivating that, again, by perspective and looking at things. Mm -hmm. Do you think that everything, like the little things are really special and those are what bring you joy? Or do you need like something really big to actually make you feel happy? And kind of evaluating that and figuring out a way to balance it is huge. And I know I was really guilty of the if then story, essentially, when I was younger, I used to think, well, when I get this job at Disney, I'll be happy. Mm-hmm. When I finally in the relationship I want, I'll be happy. And like when those things weren't happening, there was a point where I was just miserable a lot of the time and just waiting. And I was in a waiting space. And that wasted so much time because if I was able to stop and look around me, I was like, I'm living in a great place. I'm surrounded by wonderful people. And no, my life doesn't exactly look like everything I want right now in one place, but there's so much here that is so good and so beautiful and can fill me up if I let it. Yeah. I think that's the, that's the key takeaway from, from this is if you let it, yeah. you know, anything can be as big as you make it or as small as you make it. So maybe start getting into a practice of diminishing the negative things. I'm sitting in traffic. You can get angry about it. You can get frustrated about it. You can hit your steering wheel, beep your horn or expletive. If someone cuts (laughs) you off or whatever, you can do that. And that's a natural reaction. And I've done all of those things. Yes. I literally beeped my horn at someone this morning who cut me off. But instead of like laying into that, if you start like taking that pause, that moment, there's always a moment in between the thing happening and you reacting to it. And that moment can be as long as you make it. You can react instantly or you can pause. And it's just about, it's literally practice makes perfect. You just start to pause a little and then a little longer and then a little longer until you allow yourself enough time and space to say, you know what, I'm not going to feed into this and react negatively. Or maybe I'm going to react a little negatively because I'm just really frustrated or I'm tired or whatever but not as much. And you just slowly start to dial it back. And then on the flip side, you start to allow yourself to be a little more filled up by the positive things, a little more excited than normal. I think there's this idea that like as adults, we have to like maintain composure and not (laughs) 
and not get too excited or get too animated or whatever. And maybe it's from living in Orlando and working at Disney, but I'm like a very animated person. I think a lot of us are. And I let myself get really excited about really small things. And it 100% is the causation of my ability to find happiness every day. When I buy myself flowers, I could go, I have to buy myself flowers because no boy is buying them for me. (laughs) Or (laughs) Or I get to pick out the flowers that I like and I know where I'm going to put them and I'm going to see them every morning and I'm going to take care of them and watch them grow. And it's like such a source of happiness for me. And at the end of the day, it's something so simple. And like we talked about during the month of love and relationships, there's no limit to the amount of times you can get yourself flowers or, you know, make yourself a cup of coffee. Every morning I like take the mug in both my hands and I like breathe in really deeply and just allow that moment to kind of fill me up all my senses. And I'm like, okay, let's do this day, you know? And Mm -hmm. it's again, such a small, simple thing, but those small, simple things that you let really fill you up, make your day better. And then they make your week better. And then they make your year better. And slowly over time, you become a happier person. And it's just all those small little moments put together. Yeah, that's where the joy is, is those little things. And it's really important to note as well that I think there is a bit of a distinction between happiness itself versus contentment, which Honestly, I don't know if this is a widespread opinion, but for me, I almost strive for contentment more than happiness a lot of the time. And happiness, it's kind of like a additional bonus on top of the contentment a lot of the time. I think contentment is what we were talking about, like looking around where you are, taking note of all the beautiful things. You know, it doesn't need to be some super high Yes, there's going to be those days where you have those really big life moments. You get the job you've been dreaming of. You get a dog. You go on a really exciting date. You're going on this vacation. But what about all that time in between? Mm -hmm. There's so much in between time. And you can either be in a space of waiting for the next big high or you can enjoy what's going on on the day to day. Sometimes the boring days are actually some of the best days because you're like, everything in life is just pretty much in balance. Everyone's healthy. I have great food on the table and I'm just taking time and watching some Netflix today and relaxing, or I'm going for a walk in the park and it's simple, but it's good. That makes me happy. Just looking back on the small stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. Because there's a security factor there too. And contentment, you know, everything, like you said, is in balance and there's, there's goodness, there's a simplicity, but it's so wholesome. It's like comfort food. It's so simple and it's so easy to make, but it's so underrated because sometimes you just need a bowl of spaghetti. You don't need a five course (laughs) meal. And I think that's what happiness is. It's just a bowl of spaghetti. It's just something really simple, you know, really thoughtful, And really just uh, the word cozy comes to mind. Like when I think of cozy, Mm -hmm. I think of being like being around the people that I love or being around something that I love or uh, like a smell that makes me feel at home or whatever it is. I think that those things that tend to happen on boring days are actually, you know, like those are the moments you piece together and that's, that's the life that you build. When I was younger, I definitely did this thing. And I'm sure many of you can relate to this because some people are like, oh, life is what happens when you're in between, you know, Disney trips or just vacations mm-hmm. in general. And, and I would do this thing where I would feel like as soon as I got home from a trip, I wanted to plan my next one. And I wanted there to be a countdown in my phone and I wanted to have something to look forward to. <laughs> and I think we're like, Jess is laughing because I'm did. like, <laughs> I lived through this with you slash had my own version of it. Too. This was my, yeah, this was like when we were first friends, but you know, there was just this sense of like life when I'm in between is is mundane or it's boring or it's cold or whatever. And I really missed out on enjoying those simple, boring, quote unquote, days of my life because I was constantly feeling this dissonance, this kind of pull within myself of like, well, I'm not I'm not at Disney. or I'm waiting to be, or like, this isn't happening yet. And that constant reach for something you can't have, or something that's just beyond your reach or something that's coming, but it's not here fast enough. This was like 10, 12 years ago. So I definitely have gotten past that now, but it started with me 
stopping saying the words, I can't wait. Mm -hmm. And I know it sounds so silly and so simple and people say it all the time, but I've actually like responded to Instagram comments with, I can't wait. And then I delete it and rewrite the response because I catch myself still. And it's not that like, I'm not excited, you know, oh, we should get coffee, whatever. I'm like, oh, I can't wait because I I'm excited. But at the same time, I can wait because in the waiting, other things are going to come and other things are going to happen that I want to be present for Mm -hmm. because those things are happy things too. And so I think whatever the narrative is, whatever the context that you allow yourself is what builds the narrative. So if I keep saying, I can't wait, then I'm constantly going to live in the future. You're constantly in a waiting space. Mm -hmm. Don't live your life in a waiting room. And then there's also a lot to be said for how the only thing certain in life is that it's always changing. I know Mm -hmm. that's a constant theme that we hear, but it's true. I mean, even if you look at the perspective of where we are now versus where we were a little over a year ago, think about like having a quote unquote normal day back in 2018, 2019. Like there were so many little things that you could appreciate from pre-COVID life that a lot of us probably looked right past because we were trying to get to the next big thing. Yep. Not to look at it as like things are going to change that drastically all the time because they're not. But over time, things do evolve and the little sweet things that happen on your day to day now might shift and grow and change and turn into something else. So I think appreciating those in the now is such a gift. And so I know it's integral to my happiness because When I look back on this time, I want to look back and be like, wow, I'm glad I was really present for that. And I got to enjoy that while that was like the main thing that was going on in my life. Because contentment doesn't necessarily mean my whole life is great right now. Right. And that's not what happiness is either. It could be a moment. It could be that moment where you've got your hands wrapped around your coffee mug in the morning. And maybe the day ahead of you is uncertain and scary and stressful. Maybe yesterday was rough, but in that moment, you're content. So you let it, that's part of the whole act of breathing in deeply and putting both your hands like steadily wrapped around the mug and taking a slow sip. It's that allowing the moment to fill you and allowing that moment to be bigger than it really is Mm -hmm. because that's, that's contentment and that's happiness. And it's in that moment, but then you let that moment linger. And if the day gets stressful, even if you have to think, oh, that coffee was so good this morning, it sounds silly and ridiculous. I always say like, I'm never going to apologize for getting excited about small things. And I've had friends or even dated people who would like criticize me or kind of look at me weird if I got excited about a really small, ridiculous thing. And I'm like, this is happiness. This is where the joy is. This is where the joy is. Like, don't you steal my joy? <laughs> Literally. Exactly. But even if you just have to piece together moments at a time until those moments become bigger than the moments that don't feel like happiness, that don't feel secure, it will still become the majority over time. And it will still cultivate for you a life that looks like those people. And we all know those people that you look at them and you're like, well, how are they so happy? Like, what's up with that? Like, what are they drinking? There's no <laughs> way somebody is that happy. Mm-hmm. But it's it's that. It's literally those small little nuggets of joy that they string together. And I think there's something really important about that concept of looking at people and being like, how are they happy all the time? And realizing that's not necessarily true. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and by not necessarily true, I mean like definitely not true. Yeah. There is no human that is happy all the time. And if you claim that other people are, I challenge you to look at that more critically and just Even- realize like people who are quote unquote happy are happy because of the small moments, because they relish in the appreciation and that overwhelming gratitude in the things that do bring them joy. But then They do go through hardships like everyone else. We are all human beings. It's part of the contract of being a human. Like that's just what we go through. I think a lot of it has to do with the way that they respond to situations versus react. Truly happy people who intentionally cultivate a practice of joy, contentment, happiness realize that Sometimes you have to really sit with the sadness or the anger or the frustration and work through it and give yourself permission to feel it for however long and then let it go. Mm -hmm. 
the moment between the thing happening and you reacting or responding can be as narrow or as wide as you choose. So a reaction is a quick thing and a response is sometimes more contemplated, more premeditated. But I think it's also important to note that genuinely happy people do not portray false positivity. I was just going to bring this up. So here we go. There is such a difference between being positive and being happy. And I know what you guys are all going to say, but Kristen, your Instagram handle is positively.kristen. Do you guys know that that's actually like a double-edged sword? I bet most people don't know that because I have to explain it a lot. The positively does mean like positive because honestly, it was sort of me trying to be like, okay, this is my like goal for myself. If I put this framework around myself, because I'm a goal oriented person, I'm going to strive to become it. But the other, the flip side of it is positively means like absolutely, definitely, undoubtedly, like non-negotiably Kristen. Like, mm-hmm. like this is me. You're getting real me. Authentically <laughs> Kristen. <laughs> <I> leave it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. So I think I have to explain that a lot. So no, I'm not a proponent of false positivity at all. And I think that, that it's really toxic, but I think genuinely happy people know, like just said, how to sit with their emotions, sit with their mess and find the right people to help them sit in it and get through it and move on from it. And yes, they may try and find a silver lining when they're in it. And if they lose their job, maybe they, you know, aren't a single income household and they're saying, thank God my husband is still employed. Or if they got sick or something, they're saying, well, thank goodness I have the resources to take care of myself and get myself the medicine that I need or whatever. But that's not false positivity or a silver lining. What that really is, is gratitude in the face of adversity and challenge ultimately gets you back on the road to happiness. Whereas Mm. false positivity, not only are you lying to yourself, but that will manifest itself in the way things go down for you. (laughs) Um, If you don't know who Brene Brown is, literally stop what you're doing right now. Actually, not right now. At the end of this episode, stop what you're doing (laughs) and go order her books, watch her Netflix special, go watch her TED Talks. We'll put it in the show notes. She's just a wonderful human being. She was talking about when she and her husband get into arguments and they basically say the story I'm telling myself is. So if they're having a disagreement and they just don't really get where the other person's coming from. They'll just go, the story I'm telling myself is this. So if I were in an argument with Jess. No more of those. This is hypothetical. (laughs) No, but we can, okay, we can even use like the big one as an example. Yeah. When, if I had known about this and I weren't an immature 18 year old at the time, (laughs) I maybe would have said, Jess, the story I'm telling myself is that you don't see me or you don't care that I'm here or you don't you don't know that I need you or whatever it is. I may have said that. And if I would have said that, we probably would have avoided (laughs) years of distance, but it's okay. Everything works out the way it's supposed to. We have lessons to learn. (laughs) The point is you can, you can take ownership of your emotions that way and go, okay, this is the story I'm telling myself. If you're lying to yourself, you're doomed because Mm -hmm. a lie is a lie is a lie is a lie. And over time, the more you lie to yourself, the more you start to believe those lies to be true. And then the lines get really blurry between what's true and what's not. And suddenly you're just so far off the track that you want to be on. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, positivity does not equal happiness. A front of positivity has such corrupt underlying energy to it that eventually is going to crack and you're going to need to do some evaluating again. But I think there is a way to have a positive outlook and cultivate it genuinely versus forcing it and trying to make it happen. It's like the feeling of two puzzle pieces that don't go together that you're trying to fit together. You're trying to put on this front of I'm really positive, everything's fine, and it just doesn't fit. You know Mm -hmm. the feeling of when puzzle pieces fit together. That's the feeling I try to strive for in life. That's called alignment. And that's the way that you can create change. You can create anything for yourself is when you are aligned to essentially the highest version of yourself, whatever that looks like. There's a lot to be said for having a positive outlook, but not at the expense of your authenticity. Right. I always say fine isn't good enough. 
fine isn't good enough in this space in that if you tell yourself or somebody else, I'm fine or it's fine. And like just said, that's misaligned with how you really feel or the story that you're telling yourself authentically, mm -hmm. then those tectonic plates are just going to cause friction that ultimately is going to start a fire. I think it's so important to, to take note of the power that words have and the Ooh. way that you speak to yourself, to others is so powerful. I think that even when we make self-deprecating jokes or say anything like with an ill will, even if you don't have the mal intent behind it, it's still so powerful. It ultimately signals out energy and it comes back. Law of Attraction 101, what you put out is what you get back. So especially lately, I've been really on top of trying to look at the way that I speak to myself and to others and about things that I care about. And it's it's a very humbling experience because there's just so much awareness involved. And I just want to make sure that my point of attraction is somewhere in a higher vibrational range than lower because I want those good, wholesome, beautiful things. And it's really, really important to just look at how you're speaking. And yeah, it's and when it comes to happiness, especially like yeah. there's a lot in this realm. <laughs> and the way you speak to yourself sets the tone for how others speak to you and treat you and regard you and think about you. You know, this isn't just professionally, but this is in your friendships, your relationships, when you meet people. There's a certain level of quiet confidence, I think, that's really powerful. Like it is a force to be reckoned with when you can say, I am happy because people are like, what? <laughs> you know, it's not something you expect to hear. And I am confident and I am content or in this moment, like I'm happy those are really powerful words. And again, the story you tell yourself will become your reality. So if you're lying to yourself, your lies will become true for you. If you're speaking truth to yourself, those truths will only become more powerful. So tell yourself the truth. <laughs> yes. And I think it was so important to mention too, the way that you were just saying, I am blank. So those are, I am statements, which are mm -hmm. extremely significant because I mean, if you are spiritual, religious, it really connects directly to God, the universe, like I am statements, like you're pulling in that divine energy, but the word, amen. Yeah, I as, am. <laughs> yeah. As well, like saying I am blank. It's a list of things that you would like to have do or be. And regardless of whether you say I am happy, confident, beautiful, or you say I am miserable, lonely, depressed, you are stating that to the universe, to yourself, to your life, and you eventually evolve and manifest into those things. So I think it's super important to just be aware of what you're telling yourself and what you are claiming to be. Because if you are claiming to be something that you really don't want to be, you're going to just keep perpetuating that reality. And if you claim that, for example, like happiness does not exist, that's just what's going to show up in your life. You're going to find evidence for that. So Yes, the power of words, very important, very humbling experience to analyze those, but I think also powerful. And that's why we talk about affirmations all the time, because affirmations are I am statements towards the higher version of yourself, towards the version of yourself you want to be. So for happiness, particularly like I am happy, I am joyful, I am finding the good in all things. There's so many, and it's such a fun, juicy area to explore affirmations mm -hmm. in. I am excited. Mm -hmm. I am, I'm thrilled. I'm stoked. Like whatever it is you have to do, <laughs> um, I'm ready. Get you the know, emotion behind it. That one is powerful too. Even if you feel anxiousness or nerves surrounding a life change or something you've got to do, an audition, whatever it is, I'm ready. Because whatever you need to do the thing is probably already inside you. So if you tell yourself, I'm ready then all you have to do is get set and go. You know, what's really interesting is the other day I just learned this. I think I saw it on TikTok and then my therapist, I think confirmed it, but the energy of nervousness and excitement is like the same area of your brain because mm -hmm. you get yeah. these same exact reactions in your body. You get that like overstimulation. You have a lot of the same 
quote unquote symptoms of your body when you're nervous and excited. So the main trick is to tell your brain I'm excited and you transmute the nervousness into excitement. And that's a really huge shift. Yeah. And I think there is such a thing as positive stress too. And that could be, you know, positive nerves. I think, you know, that shows that you care, that shows that you're invested in whatever it is that you're doing, whether, whether it's an audition or an interview or, you know, a new life change, whether it's your wedding day, you know, nerves and jitters, so to speak. And, and that healthy stress is actually a really actionable thing. It's very kinetic. You can turn that into expendable energy. And I think that it's important to then note the flip side of this, these I am statements, these affirmations can be very dangerous if you're telling yourself, I am anxious versus I am feeling anxious right now. Like I always, I I think we were talking about this the other day. I was like, I don't like yeah. to say I have anxiety, like, like clinically or whatever I do, but I don't care. <laughs> I don't say I have anxiety. I just will feel anxious sometimes. And I'm like, hmm, what's going on right now? And then you stop and check in with it. Almost like it's somebody who showed up and like knocked on the door and you're like, oh, I wasn't expecting company right now. Or like, oh, somebody's here or some your phone rings and it's a number you don't recognize, but you still feel like you should answer because you're like, I sort of want to know who this is. Hello. Anxiety. Is that you? Oh, no, thanks. I'm busy right now. Bye. <laughs> like, whatever it is, those I am statements can be really debilitating if you affirm these things that creep up in your life and sort of sort of try to steal your joy. I am I am anxious. I am I am lonely. I am sad. Um, and it's okay to feel all those things all the time. It's completely human and normal. And I think if we didn't feel them, we wouldn't know what happiness truly felt like. Mm-hmm. But just not giving them the power to become your identity. Yeah. Not claiming them as your own. Yeah. You don't want to carry that around with you. (laughs) No. Instead of saying I'm a sad person or I am whatever, just I'm feeling sad right now and that's okay. And we're processing it, but I'm not claiming it and holding on to it and putting it in my backpack, like Mm -hmm. a brick that I have to carry around for my mile long hike. I'm just, (laughs) you know, going to look at it and then toss it on the side of the road and keep going. And then I think the last thing to note as far as affirmations and words and, and the language and the story we tell ourselves is to avoid the superlative. And by that, Mm -hmm. I mean like extreme wording. So always, never, most, least, worst, best, anything that's super polarizing on one end of a spectrum of any given spectrum. I'm always this, or I never feel this, or that person's always happy, or I never get what I want. You know, it's not true. It's not to use the superlative, but it's never true <laughs> that, that someone always gets what they want or that you never do or that that person gets all the best things in life and I get the worst things or that person is the worst. Those things generally fall somewhere in the middle. <laughs> like maybe you get a lot of the things that your heart desires and some of the things that your heart desires are waiting until you're ready for them. You're ready to fully embrace them. Maybe that person isn't the worst. Maybe they're just having a bad day. (laughs) You know, again, with that assumption, that attribution theory, are we assuming that the external circumstances are causing that person to react in a certain way because their mind is set in that mindset? So are we assuming that the person flipping me off in traffic has just decided that they're an angry person? They say, I am angry. I have anger issues. And then they flip you off in traffic. That's got nothing to do with you. And that's got nothing to do with the external circumstance. That's an internal thing. It's not who they are. It's just an internal struggle of their own. So I think Mm -hmm. it's important to avoid those extreme adjectives when we're describing ourselves or somebody else. Yeah, it can put you in a really rough space, like a paradigm that you're living in, like an either or paradigm. It has to be one or the other or it's all or nothing. And I would welcome you to critically analyze that and ask yourself, number one, is this true? Number two, how can I shift it? And is there even a possibility for it to shift? And the answer is most likely yes. And as one individual human being, like maybe no, you're not going to be able to shift it by yourself, but just by opening your mind and yourself up to the possibility, you create more space for those things to evolve and grow and change. I would also love to talk about people achieving things before you did. You know, it's kind of like if if you and your best friend are both in a serious relationship at the same time with 
two different people, obviously. And just at the time that your relationship comes to a really like heartbreaking close, like it's just a messy breakup and the relationship comes to an end, your friend gets engaged. How do you show up genuinely for your friend and genuinely be happy for her while still allowing space to grieve your own loss. And that's really hard. And sometimes we find ourselves in those situations, not so like specifically aligned. Um, Examples might be, you know, you and your friend were both up for the same job and your friend got the job or you really wanted to go on this like European trip and your friend got to go on the exact itinerary trip that you had been like planning for years and wanting to go on, but you couldn't financially make it work. Whatever it is, it's jealousy, right? It's all jealousy. It all comes down to that. But I would ask you to challenge yourself. And I can say this as someone who has experienced jealousy and also been on the receiving end of somebody else's jealousy is the jealous feeling that is really only hurting you more important than the person you are in that relationship space with? Is it more important for you to be jealous and angry at your friend for getting engaged and being happy while you're sad? Or is it more important for you to show up for your friend joyfully and authentically? Odds are your friend is going to show you grace in return and sit with you in your mess of your breakup if they're a good, true friend, while also celebrating something exciting, a new milestone in their life. So I think, again, (laughs) attribution theory, (laughs) we're coming back to this, like assuming the external versus the internal. Don't assume that your friend is so busy riding their high that they forgot to care about you. Let them ride the high. But happiness is reassigning priority. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a priority to to grieve that space and adjust to the new change, but it's also a priority to celebrate the relationships that you do have and the ones that you want to maintain because this is a celebratory time for your friend and celebration (laughs) makes people feel better. I went through a breakup once and on the very same day, I went to a baby shower for a friend of mine who was like having a lot of fertility issues and finally got pregnant. And that was like the best thing I could have done. And I did not want to go at all. I was like, I'm probably going to start crying. Like, I don't want to fake being happy with people. And you know what? I didn't. I did have to do the like, oh, hello. Nice to meet you with the people I didn't know. But the people who did know me and were actually my friends were like, hey, how are you doing? And I was like, not so great. And they were like, thank you so much for being here. And I felt that thank you. I felt that gratitude more significantly than anyone else who had showed up there because they knew how much harder it was for me to show up there. But I felt so much better for having been there and engaging in the celebration and the excitement. It helped me to kind of forget for a while, which is okay. It's okay to escape from your own mind and your own swirling thoughts for a while. So we tend to look at jealousy through the lens of righteousness because you feel like you've been cheated or you deserve something that somebody else got. That's not how happiness works. It's not something that you earn or deserve. It's something that's inherently available to every human person by nature of their inherent worthiness to experience because the experiential nature of happiness is a gift that we get to enjoy, that in and of itself is amazing. So not looking at it as something, well, they must have done something better, you know, Mm -hmm. to deserve this thing that happened to them. I must be a bad person. No. They're just experiencing this moment right now. But you can cultivate the same happiness within yourself. Yeah. That has nothing to do with circumstance. And your friend who's going through this thing right now, whether it be – having a baby or getting married or going on the trip, getting the job, whatever, that's part of their path. That is exactly where they are meant to be on their life journey right in this moment. There is no indication that because they're doing that right now, that it's going to take it away from you in the future. It is kind of a huge trust exercise to be in this space because if you have anything like this that you desire so deeply, you almost have to just trust it and be like, okay, this is happening for them right now. And it doesn't mean it's not going to happen for me, but when it is my time on my path, I am open to receive it and to step into that for myself. 
And whether or not it happens in the future, it's not guaranteed necessarily, but letting go of that control and trusting and surrendering that if it's truly meant for you, it will not pass you is the most effective way to create it for yourself. And maybe the way you eventually create it will be even more personal to you. You'll have more qualities of your personal experience that are going to light you up even more than it would have right now. Mm -hmm. And also to look at it in more of a spiritual sense, because this is what I always do. Welcome to Rediscover. (laughs) Welcome to Rediscover, where we're getting more spiritual by the day. But but there's a concept that we've mentioned before called the law of abundance, how there is an abundance of everything available to all of us. And I was about to say this, so you're just, yes. I think putting any limits on the law of abundance only limits yourself in your human experience because ultimately, like I like to believe we are all capable of the infiniteness that is the creative energy that created us, God, the universe, etc. So the limitations come from the human experience and that's just natural, but it doesn't mean that this infinite power isn't available to us. Just because you don't get to do a thing right now doesn't mean that it's not possible. It's absolutely possible and it could be even better than you imagine. And that frees you up so much to be present in your life and to experience happiness in the simplicity, in the goodness of every day, because you're not worried about the future of, am I going to get to do this thing? You're not experiencing extreme jealousy about people in your life that are doing a thing that you would also ultimately like to experience. Those feelings don't have any hold over you because you're living in the present moment you know what's meant for me will not pass me. There is an unlimited amount of goodness to be experienced. So I have nothing to worry about. Exactly. And I think this this sort of like also ties into our singleness talk that we had. But like that's yeah. that's honestly that right there is the biggest thing that has helped me in singleness in mm-hmm. In moving on my own. And and somebody the other day I was talking to was like, oh my gosh, how do you like live alone? Do you need to get a pet or something? And I was like, I mean, I'd love a puppy, but I'm fine. And (laughs) it's literally that like, if I'm meant to be with someone, you know, when people ask me like, why don't you go on dating apps? Don't even look for me on any of them guys. I'm not on any of them. (laughs) I haven't, I know you're all trying to. (laughs) For all of Kristen's suitors out there. (laughs) I I have never downloaded a dating app and I'm a millennial. And everyone's like, what? That's crazy. I'm like, I don't even know which way you're supposed to swipe, guys. But it's because I'm I'm just genuinely like, look, if God has someone in mind for me, if God has a story to tell there, God's going to tell the story whether I know about it or not. Like he's already writing and I'm just over here like waiting for the book to come out so I can order it on Amazon. <laughs> so, <laughs> And for someone who's like a hyperproductive perfectionist, it almost makes me feel like I'm too hands off about my life. But I'm like, you know what? There are some things that I am okay with being out of my hands and I'm much happier that way because it's far too much pressure on one person to try and like every day, like build this perfect existence that looks like a combination of all the things you think are perfect in everyone else's life around you. I mean, when you think about it, we are literally human beings and are... I mean, our capacities for creation are fantastic and amazing and beautiful if you tap into it, but they're also really limited if you're just trying to use your own personal individual energy. Like Mm -hmm. if you are able to surrender, let go, open up to things coming to you and being open to receive, they really do show up. And it takes a lot of strength. It takes some detachment. It takes like literally like skydiving and just trusting the fall. Oh my and, gosh. Yeah. My friend literally just texted me like two days ago and was like, do you want to go skydiving? Oh my and God. I was like, what? And she was <laughs> like, I'm just trying to do some cool things that I've always wanted to do. This is my friend who's like my singleness guru. There that you is go. crazy that you just said. That. Well, maybe it's a sign you should go, but yeah, <laughs> it's like, it's trusting the free fall of life. And yeah. At the end of the day, there's really no guarantee of what will or will not happen. But I think that we do have a lot of say in what we want to experience and what we desire. And our our desires are great and beautiful and can absolutely happen. But I think also like leaving open the space for the wiggle room, for the magic and for the orchestration to unfold 
and really, again, like we were talking about before, like enjoying those little things and enjoying the present moment. There's just so much there that is so beautiful and enjoyable. And there's a lot to be said for having the strength to surrender. Sometimes Mm -hmm. surrendering is more strong than being overly hands-on. The metaphorical skydive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for those who are scripture people, literally like plastered all over scripture, but there is genuinely a verse that goes, God hears the desires of your heart. Like Mm -hmm. he wants to know them. I mean, he already knows them, but he wants you to speak them. Like, it's almost like God's like, Hey, manifest with me. (laughs) Like literally it's like, God hears the desires of your heart. Tell God the desires of your heart. He already knows like the universe is fully aware of everything, every particle of you because it's what's holding you together. So it is you too. Yes. But speaking it makes you part of the conversation, part of the story, and it allows you to be an active participant in those desires coming to you, which only increases your faith, which works out better for everyone. (laughs) So it's so cool how that works. It's like the roller coaster free fall, like blissful moment when you figure it out and you're like, wow, I could have been doing this the whole time. I've been going uphill forever. Yeah. Yeah. It's what was right. I missing? Yeah. And when we talk about cultivating happiness, like there's excitement involved there. There's an anticipation. And and then you can feel free to live out your days with this undercurrent of happiness because you know that like, hey, someone's got this. Like someone has got me and is writing my story along with me. All I have to do is just keep putting one foot in front of the other and showing up every day. So yeah. And knowing good things are coming and super cool. Even if they don't look exactly verbatim the way you think they will tuning in. And when those things do happen, you're like, Hey, this is what I was talking about. Pretty neat. (laughs) Crazy. I think one of the biggest things too, that I like to live by is like, life is just a playground. So Like we're just here to play in life. Like we create a lot of the things in our lives and choose a lot of the experiences that we do. So dabbling into that and choosing experiences that do make us so happy. It doesn't have to be anything super extravagant. It can be all the little things again. I think the key component is losing yourself in it. Mm -hmm. You're going to cook dinner, put on some music, make like pull out an old family recipe, have Mm -hmm. a glass of wine while you're cooking, like make it a whole thing you can lose yourself in. Maybe you're listening to music. Maybe you're listening to this podcast. (laughs) Maybe you're calling a friend. Maybe it's raining and you love to walk in the rain. So you just like put on your favorite rain jacket and some cute galoshes and you go out and play in the rain. There's no age cap on playing in the rain. And that's what happiness is. Ultimately, it's playing in the rain of your life. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. I'll leave you with that. All right. I have a fun way that I thought we could maybe tie up the episode. Tie it up, Jess. All right. So I was not it. I was thinking (laughs) to round out this episode, we could do our own rapid fire of things that make us happy. Oh, cute. I like this. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Who is a person that makes you happy? Oh, Taylor Swift came to mind. I mean, a person you know, Jess. I know her. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) I'm just kidding. I don't personally know me, but I know her. (laughs) But I know her. No, Kristen makes me happy. Oh, I was going to say Jess makes me happy because she's taught me a lot about happiness for sure. Oh, thank you. My joy in life. Okay. Um... (laughs) What is something in nature that makes you really happy? Ooh, sunshine for sure. It's- I was going to say the moon, so we're balanced. We are balanced. <laughs> she is the yin to my yang. Yeah, sunshine. <laughs> the feeling of sunshine on my skin is like bliss. Mm-hmm. A song that makes you happy. Like it comes on and you're just like jamming out. Oh, no I what got this. <laughs> Good Time by Owl City and Carly Rae Jepsen. Oh, that song makes me think of Animal Kingdom dance parties at yeah. 3 p.m. In the summer. (laughs) It reminds me of driving around in high school with like the sun beaming down and it's summertime and And dynamite. Do you remember our obsession? Dynamite. (laughs) Kyle Cruz. (laughs) Yes, we loved that. Yeah. Um, there are so many. Okay, I have a Spotify playlist. It's called Sync Rainbows. Oh my gosh, it's called Sync Rainbows. I just realized that we just talked about manifesting a rainbow with Amy oh last gosh. week. Um, and if you I, haven't listened to that episode, go listen because it is magic. 
not only did I see a rainbow today, but um, this playlist, it's all my songs that like make me just feel super, super joyful. And the first one on there is Sunflower by Vampire Weekend. And I love that song a lot. Cute. But I'd say like old school song. I love So Yesterday by Hilary Duff. It just oh. makes me feel powerful. <laughs> Hilary Duff. That's a happiness <laughs> vibe for sure. If it's over, let it go. Okay, your turn. I like this. Um, this it's like you guys are here with us. This is so fun. It's so fun. Um, Let's see. What is just an obscure thing that you would have fun doing just if you were staying at home by yourself all day that would just bring you joy dance party I have solo dance parties all the time I will just play music and like make up my own dance routines all by myself (laughs) and it's probably super embarrassing but it's so fun and that serotonin is like there it's red and high yeah I think my answer, I did this today, but I took out all of my Disney pins. If you did not know this, I have an extensively large Disney pin collection. That is my favorite thing in the whole entire world. But I just organized them all, put them into categories. Organizing makes me very happy. And then I put on some Epcot music. I feel like I've evolved through so many stages of Disney fandom in my life, but (laughs) I feel like that's something I'll always come back to. Like I was feeling so nostalgic and just cozy and happy and like that was pure happiness. And it was just me sitting on my floor. So I love it. What is a smell that makes you happy? Like A fresh baked something, whether it be brownies, Mm. cookies, bread, like that aroma that fills the kitchen and the house when you bake something really good. It gives me exceptional excitement. I was going to say the same thing like. Chocolate chip cookies right out of the oven. Come on. What's something really cute that makes you happy? Puppies. Yes. What kind of puppies? All the puppies. All the puppies. <laughs> um, golden retrievers and <laughs> uh, pugs and all of the shepherds and but particularly the Australian kind and um, huskies and labs. <laughs> We love dogs. <laughs> I'm a big dog person. Also <laughs> otters. I'm obsessed with yes, otters. Yes, me too. I love them. I thought of another thing that's not animals. Yes. Dimples. Uh, I think dimples are so cute and I don't have any. And I always <laughs> wish that I did, but my mom has the girdle freaking dimples in the whole world. And I just want to run. Oh, they, <laughs> they are so cute. Um, okay. When I think of cute, I think of kawaii. And when I think of kawaii, I think of Hello Kitty and all the Sanrio characters because they are just so cute. I love them all. Gudetama. Gudetama. <laughs> I hope you guys know that we're both sitting here looking at each other on Zoom, making these like Sebastian claws. We're like squeezing we're cute talking little cheeks. about cute things. Cute things make me so happy. Like, I don't know what it is. My brain. There's a thing called cuteness aggression. Like, you know that feeling when you see something cute? Like, oh, yes. God, squeeze it. Like... <laughs> That is a constant joke in my life because I'm like, oh my God, I have cuteness aggression. Eliza Schlesinger, who I love and adore. All of her Netflix specials are amazing, but there's one and I forget which one it is, but she's literally, she does a whole bit about that, but (laughs) it's in reference to a a baby's thigh. Oh my God. (laughs) Chubby baby leg. And she's like, you know, when you feel it in the back of your teeth and you're like, I'm going to eat that leg. (laughs) It's so funny because it's a thousand percent true. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) So okay, cool. what is a food that makes you feel like happy and content? All <laughs> food. <laughs> Immediately I go to pizza always because buffalo, but also desserts, like cutely decorated cupcakes and mm. cakes and I mean, I watch the Great British Bake Off like it's my job, like because it gives Finally, me so, she it. <laughs> it gives me so much serotonin. Noel's number one fan over here, but like yeah. <laughs> honestly, that makes me so happy. My mind immediately went to tacos because I think Mm. tacos are like a thing I never eat alone. Mm -hmm. Like it's always like, let's go to this Mexican place or let's go get tacos here. And then it becomes like a, like margaritas and tacos and whatever. And I I associate that with happiness because I feel like that's like a togetherness thing. Yes. But as far as like solo things, hot chocolate with mini marshmallows, like curled up on the couch with the fireplace or s'mores because I think as a child, my entire diet was s'mores because we went camping all the time. What is like one thing you do every day that makes you happy? 
like that you do every single day. Not like a thing you like to do sometimes, but one thing you do every single day. Hmm. I think just talking to my friends and connecting, and I know it's pretty much all through my phone lately, but it makes me really happy. And it's not usually the same friend every day, but it just makes me feel like the togetherness aspect again. Yeah. And it's yeah. sweet. So, yeah. Well, I feel like mine's like obvious. It's coffee. <laughs> Aside from that, I, I talk to my mom every single day, even yeah. if like I'm with her or not. Like we talk on the phone every single day and just hearing her voice makes me like feel oh. – the word that comes to mind is snugged. <laughs> which is the word I use for like snuggled, cozy, happy, like, yes. like loved. Also, my mom is included in my friends. Yeah. As well. But she gets to see her mom. I know. And she comes in the room and asks us if we want snacks. <laughs> She's the best. <laughs> I'm not sad, guys. Oh, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, as always, we like to give you guys some applicable takeaways, some resources and references that you can use if this is a topic that interested you. And of course, we will link everything in the show notes like always, but definitely on my end, check out Brene Brown. She is incredible. She will change your life. Mm-hmm. And if you are into more of a spiritual space, open-minded, anything that we've said resonates with you, Abraham Hicks is an amazing speaker. Her real name is Esther Hicks, and she channels consciousness in the form of Abraham. She has people up on stage and they ask her questions and she essentially channels from consciousness. And she talks a lot about law of attraction, human desires, getting into a space of allowance and receiving, and reaching for those good feeling thoughts. Because when you feel good, you're going to attract things of higher vibration. Because again, like attracts like. Huge recommendation. She changed my life when I listened to her initially, and I still do to this day. And then another thing I want to mention, there's a gratitude journal that I absolutely love. It is by Insight Editions on Amazon. I'll link it for you in the show notes as well. But I think a huge part of my happiness cultivation practice is using a gratitude journal. And this one is so straightforward, but so good. And it's easy enough to do morning and night. And they also have a whole line now. They have like a meditation journal, a self-care journal, all these things. So highly recommend those. They're just really beautiful and cute. And I love the prompts. So if you want a tangible little journal to coincide with your practice, I recommend that one. I just thought of another quick resource again. Yes. Like if you're open to it, first of all, I don't think you have to be a Christian to read the Bible, but um, I always kind of find myself going back to the book of Romans and um, I always read the ESV version. It's definitely enough beautiful language, but also very easy to follow and understand. I just think that that book is the personal letter to us. It's just so exhilarating to read. It's really the most energizing book of the Bible, in my opinion, and it's so healing Because it really just is a lot of what Jess and I talked about. This just empowering truth that you are worthy inherently and that the desires of your heart are are worthy and that in your existing and doing nothing at all, all of this goodness has been made available to you. And it's just whether you're a believer or not, it's just a really simultaneously grounding and also just super uplifting thing to read. Okay, just a few more things coming to mind. One book I recommend is called The Game of Life and How to Play It. If you resonated with the concept of law of abundance, it goes into that as well as many other laws of the universe. It was so insightful. It's such a quick read, such a short book, but very eye-opening. And then the book Good Morning, Good Night by Lin-Manuel Miranda. It is such a cute way to start and end your day because if you followed him on Twitter for a long time, he used to make tweets that were good morning, good night with inspiration. So he put them into book form. So those are two books that I think really coincide with cultivating happiness. But if you want a longer list, I have a blog post that I can also link in the show notes with several books. They're more for personal development, spirituality that I, that's how I've titled it. But that coincides with my happiness journey. That's how I found happiness for myself. So I'm very happy to share it with you as well. 
Yeah. And I think another thing we should link in the show notes, the concepts and theories that we mentioned that obviously we did not establish ourselves. So law of abundance, law of attraction, attribution theory, we can kind of link those concepts if that's something that you're interested in diving further into. Um, Or if you just have like a paper you need to write and you need a topic. There you go. (laughs) There we go. I wish I was interested in all of this when I was back in school because I feel like I would have written such fun papers. I know. Well, when we were talking about this episode, I took a sociology class in college and I was like, Jess, I literally found a paper I wrote about cultivating happiness. <laughs> like how it. crazy is that? I hope you all liked this episode. Yes. it It's going to be a lengthy one, but there's a lot to talk about with happiness. We really wanted to take this month as everyone's kind of transitioning out of the winter blues into a more energized and hopeful mindset in spring to give you some tools and perspectives for cleaning out all of the spaces in your life, whether they be emotional or physical or digital, we're going to get into all of it. So we hope you'll stay tuned for next week. Next week's (laughs) episode is all about anxiety management strategies. So I think a lot of the things we mentioned in that episode are ways that we cultivate happiness for ourselves in those more difficult mental spaces. So it'll be a great compliment to this episode. The anxiety management was definitely a highly requested topic. So we are chock full of very applicable firsthand experience. (laughs) Yes. So thank you guys so much for listening. I hope that this episode resonated with all of you and brought you some joy and some new outlooks on your happiness journey. If this did resonate with you and you think it would resonate with someone you know and love, please send it along to them. We would love to grow our Rediscover community. We absolutely love connecting with you guys so much and wanted to thank you for being here every single episode. it That's something that makes us very happy. Yeah. You guys make us happy. Thank you so much for listening and we will talk to you next Tuesday. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Rediscover. Please subscribe and leave us a review wherever you're listening. Your reviews are what keep us going and we'd love to hear from you. Join us every Tuesday for a new conversation and let us know what you think we should talk about next. Follow us on Instagram at positively.kristen and at jessicafay508. And check out Jess's blog at theroadjesstraveled with one L.com. Until next time, stay frumpy.